Miles Cannon was distributed by Pelican for the Sony PlayStation 1 and 2. As its shape already gives away, it is based on the Stinger Light Gun, which was made for the Sega Dreamcast. As such, it has the iconic shape which most Dreamcast guns, including the original Sega Dreamcast gun, share. Where the memory card would normally go is a selector switch for the gun mode. Below it is a nice feeling circular concave D-pad. Close to it are the start and select buttons. The A and B buttons are distributed to the sides of the gun on top of the second handle. The trigger is clicky but not very tactile. Sadly, it tends to bind a lot, which might be the gun's biggest flaw. Vis-a-vis -vis to the trigger is the C button. The idea of this design is that the trigger finger can be used to quickly reload. Personally, I never was a fan of this idea, but luckily the second grip offers enough space to use the thumb of the supporting hand to actuate the button. On the left hand side is the fire mode switch. Normal, auto reload and auto reload plus auto fire are available. The magazine capacity for this reload feature is 9 shots, but it is strongly game dependent how well the auto reload is working. On the right hand side is the on off switch for the force feedback. It is rumble based, a bit delayed, but rather strong. In my opinion it is one of the better rumble force feedback implementations I have seen so far. The side picture is usable all by its range. To make it less notable that the front side is sitting on top of an elevated surface, the back side has a square between the two poles. The overall build quality is high. The gun is sturdy and solid. The two rubber grip plates however started to shrink. The coarse tension is so high that they start to come off. The RCA cable is hilariously long and spans over 2 meters. I guess this is due to a misunderstanding, as I can't imagine Pelican did so intentionally in order to have the gun directly plugged into the TV, as the connector is a normal straight male one. A T-shaped two genders mixed connector would have been more appropriate for such an application. Electronically the gun has a strange design. In order to use the gun con 2 mode, the PlayStation controller jack has to be connected to the console too. Connecting the USB jack alone doesn't work for the pulse cannon. In all three gun modes there is a tiny dead zone at the top of the screen, which probably is too narrow to be of an annoyance. In normal gun mode the accuracy is decent but the precision is very good. Start is mapped to the start button, which sadly is highly unusual, and the special shot is mapped to select. Gun con mode has the same accuracy and precision as normal gun mode. In this mode C is redundantly mapped to A, which is very welcome. In G-Con 2 mode both accuracy and precision are very good. Personally I like the pulse cannon. While I'm not very fond of Dreamcast light guns myself, I love that enthusiast stuff have with the Pulse Cannon the means to play some of the greatest light gun games ever with their favored gun design. In general, there are way better light guns for the PlayStation 1 and 2, but I would recommend this controller to Dreamcast fans. This is the end of the review. My name is Ben. I thank you for viewing.